Hey everyone, have you been enjoying this series? If so, there's something really simple you can do to help us. Go on Apple Podcasts or whatever app you've been using to listen to the show and leave us a nice comment and a good star rating. It just takes a minute and it will do wonders for helping new people discover the series. So thanks a lot and on with the show. This is Mind Your Own Business with Mike and Matt, race car radio's podcast for business owners, entrepreneurs, and aspiring entrepreneurs. Today, while the team and I are on vacation, a special quickie episode. Sometimes Mike or Matt and I have a side conversation that doesn't quite fit into a full episode, but has stuff in it that I think is really worth sharing. So today, a chat Mike and I had about a theory that's really important to him the power of what he calls abundant thinking. I hope you enjoy it. So, Mike, you mentioned something in passing um, in a previous episode, and I was, I really was kicking myself, you know, after we edited that I didn't press you to explain it better. And I was hoping maybe we could just take a minute and you could tell me what exactly you mean by a philosophy of abundance in sales. What is What does that mean? So I guess uh, I'm talking about resources, and I'm talking about abundance versus scarcity. So in sales, um, you know that you're not always going to win every piece of business that's in front of you. So you have to acqu- you have this issue. Well, if I lose this situation, even though I didn't have it, but let's assume that you have something in hand, it goes afoul. And you say, I lost it. Well, what's next? So now you have a perspective. Is there something out there that could be what's next? Or is this nothing out there? What's next? So if you think that there's nothing out there, there isn't a new opportunity out there, there isn't a new possible sale out there, then the one sale that you had in your hand is cataclysmic because it's gone. On the other hand, if you think that there is so much business out there for the taking, all you have to do is reach out, find it, it's there. Then if you had this bird in hand and it, did, it went afoul, you say, well, that's okay. That's okay because there's more out there to be found. So this perspective of abundance versus scarcity is really kind of is your uh, approach in a sense, to sales. If there's always something out there, you can find it. You have confidence that the one in hand if it doesn't work. Well, so be it. Well, for whatever the reasons are, your fault, the customer's fault, the prospect's fault, the world's fault, whatever, the economy, etc. But if you think that, oh my God, there's just a desert out there, then you're shattered if, you, if this thing didn't work. Then what? So does that somehow... I mean, is that just... Uh, a mind trick? Is that just a philo- a, pr- a personal philosophy? I mean, it's-, it's a belief. It's a belief. I mean, it's you have a value system, right? So it's it's not make believe. It's a mindset, and you have a mindset and and a belief structure. Is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? What is it? I'm looking at a bottle of water on the table, and I and I see it, and um, it's about a third full or it's two-thirds empty? How am I looking at it? So if I say it's two-thirds empty, I've got a pessimistic view, and by the way, it's scarcity, right? If I look at it, the fact that it's one-third full and I still have the ability to drink what's there, that's abundant. It's abundance. So really... And, and perhaps thinking about how you could go refill it. There you go. There's a water fountain outside. There's a, there's a bathroom or there's a kitchen. I can There's a tap. I can fill it. So... It's the same thing with sales. I might have to work a little harder for it, but I have to have this belief that it's out there. And, you know, actually this goes to another interesting mindset as to whether um, your mindset is always binary, fail or succeed, right? If it's binary and your mindset is whatever I do, I'm either going to fail or I'm going to succeed, that kind of sets you in your approach or is your mindset hey you know what 
If I succeed, I'm going to enjoy it. And if I fail, I'm going to learn from it. That changes, again, it's a belief. So I think that in sales, interestingly enough, you have beliefs, you have attitudes, and you have techniques. So you have your beliefs and attitudes, your behaviors and your techniques. So what comes first? Your beliefs and your attitude. Then from there, you have behaviors. Do you do what you're supposed to do, et cetera? And then from your behaviors, you have techniques. What are the words you use, et cetera? So what's the difference between a behavior and a technique? A behavior is I'm going to do something. I'm going to make the calls. I'm going to make the dials. I'm going to set the appointments. I'm going to do, I'm going to behave in a particular way. A technique might be I'm going to use certain words to attain a, a goal. So I might use the word like, I was wondering, supposing I could, um, help me out. These are techniques that basically one would use in a sales situation. The behavior would be, I'm going to call that difficult client. I'm going to have that conversation. And the attitude belief would be, I have the right to ask a difficult question. Or, or even on a more fundamental level, my service or my product is valuable and there are customers out there who will want to buy it. Exactly. So does that, that answer you a little bit on abundance versus scarcity? Yeah, absolutely. Let me, let me ask a devil's advocate question. Have, have you ever professionally or personally come across um, a misplaced philosophy of abundance? Someone who's just out there flogging something that there isn't a market for and really ought to be? rethinking <laughs> their, uh, their plan? Hmm. Yes, sure. Um, what can you do to convince yourself that you're not that person? Because I think that's where- I think I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what, what it is. It's, it is what, what satisfies you. you know, when, when you kind of like, where do you get the joy in your life? What, what makes you most joyful? So, you know, for instance, for me, I get an enormous amount of joy about learning. I, I love reading and I get joy out of it. When I say reading, I want to read something about abundance, scarcity, a philosophy, an approach, a mindset. Uh, I, I really want to keep learning. I want to read books. I want to read novels. To me, I want to interact with people who I can learn from. I get great joy out of that. Yeah, I'm the same way. Okay, so now then in the business that now I have a long career of many different things. And I can honestly tell you that a, a significant, I'd say half of my working career, I didn't get any joy out of. I didn't. And the other half I have. So I've been fortunate enough to basically in the last eight years to do this voice of reason, I get tremendous joy out of doing it. I make my share of mistakes. I, you know, I, say the wrong things, I get clients upset, I get myself upset, I have my arguments with Matt. So yeah, I mean, no, nothing is perfect, but I do get joy out of this. Now, I was, um, let's see, I was a hospital administrator in a hundred years uh, in a different lifetime. I got no joy out of it. I made, I got invested, I did an investment, I got a master's in public health, I went to graduate school. Ultimately, I found that the, the job was not, the, I didn't get any joy out of it. So I, I reinvented myself. I did some other things. I didn't get joy out of it. I was fortunate enough. I reinvented myself. But I was always looking for something that, you know, something that I really enjoyed. And I have difficulty when people say, follow your passion. Because I don't know what that necessarily is all the time. Maybe it's just a little bit of joy, not a big lot of passion. So I don't know. Never been able to answer that. That's, it strikes me that that's a, a personal philosophy of abundance, isn't it? Yeah. That there, there's going to be another... I've come to that. I can, I can move... I can quit this job and find something else. Yeah, which is what I did. Something will be out there. Yeah, it's exactly what I did and what I've continued to do. Although, uh, I'm not going to quit this job. <laughs> this one might be my last one, but not necessarily one that I would quit. Um, but yeah, so it is personal. I, I do believe in, that, in abundance and I believe in myself that I will adapt to the situation. That's 
really, if we're talking personal, that really what it comes down to is you have to believe in yourself and look for where's the joy. And it may not be what you're currently doing or may not be, you know, what I was currently doing. Then the key to reinventing yourself is to basically take the really good qualities that have given you some level of success in what you're doing to take it to something else. You know, so like if you're, uh, if you're good at telling stories, how do you take that to a different, a different audience, a different framework, etc.? cetera? Um, if you're good at managing people, how do you, in what, and you're in this field and it's not working, but you know you're good at it, but it's not working there, how do you take it someplace else? I feel like those things are really, it, it really is one thing, isn't it? That the, the confidence in yourself and confidence, confidence in yourself to be able to rebound from difficult situations and confidence in your business to be able to rebound from are, are incredibly I interconnected, aren't they? Yeah, they are. But I think if your mindset is just binary, succeed or fail, then it, it, it's terrible. It doesn't work because it could only win or lose. There's no in between. But if your mindset is you constantly want to learn, then, then even when you fail, you're still learning. Thanks for listening to Mind Your Own Business with Mike and Matt. We'll be back in two weeks with more full episodes, including conversations on how to survive a supply chain apocalypse and every manager's least favorite F word firing someone. Never miss an episode by subscribing to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and many of your other favorite podcasting apps. Find those links at racecarradio.com slash mindyourownbusiness. You can also follow us on social media at MYOB Podcast on Facebook and Twitter. The stars of the show are Mike Gansel and Matt Plosiak of Voice of Reason Consulting, www.voiceofreasonconsulting.com. I'm David Hoffman, and I produced and recorded the show. It was edited by Austin Colon. Mind Your Own Business with Mike and Matt is a production of Race Car Radio, www.racecarradio.com. Race Car Radio is a division of Citizen Race Car. We tell stories.